Hey, a pleasant good holiday season, everybody. This is the next Trend News Baseball Cast. I'm joined by my wonderful co-host, Andrew Santangelo. I'm Joe Borkas. We're here to talk about the NL East moves around the division that are going to affect the Philadelphia Phillies this season. But first, and foremost, a lot of them. Uh, yeah, a lot. Uh, and, and a lot rumored as well. First and foremost, uh, how are you doing today, Andrew? Doing pretty good, yeah. Another day closer to Christmas, just staying busy. What about you? Same thing, same thing. Articles, podcasts, you know, all the fun stuff. Uh, yeah. They, they canceled the Phantoms game way too late yesterday, but that's a topic for a different time. This isn't a Phantoms podcast, uh, so I'm not going to get on the AHL in this podcast. Uh, but um, <clears throat> the first team I think we'll talk about, because we have to save the worst for last, because I'm definitely not going to call the Mets the best, um, where – the Marlins have made a couple nice moves, which is getting Avisio Garcia for under when I looked at some of those, like, you know how you look at sport track and it says like those contract predictors, mm. some things had him above four years, 53. So that's why I consider that a pretty good contract. And then you signed Alcantara for only 3 million more for five years, five years, 56 total. If he keeps developing and becomes better control wise, that's one of the cheaper contracts for a potential very good two starters. I'm not sure if he's going to be an ace, but like a very good two starter. So you got that there. Plus, they're one of the top teams rumored to sign Michael Conforto post lockout. Uh, what did you think of the Marlins this far? And also, what would you think of them even further if they're all able to have Garcia plus Conforto in both corners? I'm not a big Conforto guy. I don't think that's much of a. A big move. Uh, I know Phillies have been linked to him. He's a guy I want to stay away from, uh, from as a Phillies fan, to be honest. So that one doesn't really move the needle for me too much uh, for the Marlins. Obviously, Garcia is a fantastic player in four years, 53. Not a bad deal there. So that's a significant pickup for him. But overall, I mean, I don't think the Marlins uh, – I think it's the move to make – bring in more people, maybe the seats, a guy that could be traded here in the near future because I don't think it really makes him a playoff contending team. Yeah, you know, I think they would have to do more. But the big thing with the Marlins is they have the line. Like, we saw their their lineup um, get going as young guys, but they have the pitching lineup. If Sito's healthy, you actually have pretty good guys with Alcantara, with the Lopez kid, uh, with Rodgers. Like, you have some good guys down there where obviously pitching can win you games until you can trade for the lineup. That's why I feel like if they can add a couple more people – they have a chance to kind of be a not a very competitive team, but kind of a surprise Marlins team again that will eventually fizzle out, but definitely piss you off more than you expect um, earlier in the season because they also have a solid <clears throat> uh, bullpen guys with guys they have to move out of the rotation, like Cody Petit or like that pop kid or whatever, because you're not going to have enough rotation spots. So I think uh, they're being solid pitching wise. At this point, it's more on how's Brian Anderson hitting coming off of an injury again because he's been banged up a lot of his career. Um, how's Jesus Aguilar, who did really well, hitting coming off of a knee injury? That's not easy to come back from. And how's Garrett Cooper, if he's still in the outfield, playing the outfield? Because we know he can hit, but he's not like he's the most squeaky clean um, outfielder. That's the reason why I agree with you. Conforto's a very inconsistent bat, so I don't want to pay him necessarily 74 to 80. If you pay him, say, three years, 50, that's probably Stay away. But, but Stay um, away. he's a very solid fielder. So if he goes there, that would make Cooper the backup. So I feel like that might help them. But also their stadium doesn't necessarily profile um, as well to Michael Conforto. as like if the Nationals sign Michael Conforto, or I know you don't want him, but the Philly Stadium profile is more to Michael Conforto, where the Marlins Stadium being a one that you have to really kind of get it, especially with the closed uh, stadium, I think that would profile a little bit less to Michael Conforto. But uh, that's just my thoughts there. But their team, I would put them still, like you said, probably going to be moving guys like maybe the Rojas as you signed to get good guys, probably moving the Aguilars. Um, I think you would obviously keep Garcia because you signed up for four years. That seems like that's someone you want as a veteran to have around as you're rebuilding. But, I, I mean, you're going to move maybe some of these other guys and bring in more assets. I would peg that where they are, but just because of their pitching, I would say they have a chance to be a first-half surprise team. And then 
it'll be difficult if they're going to be a team that jumps the gun too much at that point because their management gets overhyped, kind of like the Vancouver Canucks did in hockey. Or um, if they kind of just go, okay, well, it's nice we're a surprise team, but we know these young kids in the lineup are going to eventually get going. We don't want to bury them and get all these veterans that are prop that we might end up just falling flat on our face. Anyway, we want to let Chisholm, Jose Devers, and like those kids develop. So that's fine by me. It means another last place finish for the Marlins. That's what that tells me. <laughs> yeah, unless the Nationals finish in last, because the Nationals I think also have a chance to finish in last. I'll take Nationals. Uh, they got more veteran pitching. Their, their pitching staff's better. Bullpen's better. The pitching uh, is better than stay on the field. Bell, <laughs> Bell's better. Bell's better than Aguilar. Um, Aguilar. Uh, so I, I think Nationals are better off than than them right now. So that's why again, I, I mean, yeah, Garcia is a good move, but doesn't really scare me or, or move the needle if I'm a Washington fan. I'd be pretty disappointed in this off season so far. Yeah, I mean, well, if I'm a, the thing with the Nationals though is. I feel like I like, even though it's younger, the rotation of the Marlins better. Because Patrick Corbin, I used to like. He sucked ever since going to the Nationals. Uh, where um, Strauss is a good pitcher, but isn't healthy ever. So I can't rely on Steven Strauss for it. Um, where then you have guys like those Rogers kids. Joe Ross is not that great. Like, like, I feel like, unless if he gets going this year, they were able to get Josiah Gray, who is talented but needs to hone it in. So, like, if you can get guys like Ross and Gray to get going, then you're four deep. But that's the question. They have some prospects. But right now, I would say going into the season, they have the better lineup than the Marlins. But the Marlins, <coughs> if Sikto's healthy, probably have a more productive rotation. Well, you don't know what you're getting at, Sanchez. He hasn't been healthy. He... he... Kind of tailed off a little bit. Um, well, I don't know what again. I'm getting at. Strauss with that same logic, though, because he's been banged up so much, too. You do know. He's a veteran, though. Um, he's been through his up and downs. The biggest question mark for Washington's health, but if opening day when both teams are healthy, I'll take Nationals. Yeah. I just think their rotation's really suspect because Patrick Corbin being a two at this point is not who I would want as a two in my rotation. Well, I mean, Pablo Lopez isn't who I want. It's my number two either. No, but I don't think Pablo Lopez is if all goes well. I think Trevor Rogers, with how much he dealt, would probably end up to go lefty right or blah, 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 reverse that to go righty lefty because I think Alcantara to start the season you just gave him the contract would probably be the lead to be the opening day, and then you could go lefty and then you could go Lopez and then you put Cito at the four to let him kind of come back in and then whoever you put in in, in the fifth spot to win that. Yeah, uh, spot there, um, but I think a team now we have to uh, move into obviously um, because the, it's not like the like you talked about it's not like the Nationals did a heck of a lot, but the uh, team no other than get D Strange Gordon to a minor league contract that's going to move the needle right that's the World Series contending uh, move, move right there. Um, Going to get going to get you over the top, Nationals fan. He's going to hit 350 this year and uh, steal 55 bases and like. Um, but no, obviously the what I'm leading at is oh, also while we were mentioning the Marlins, they did trade Jorge Alfaro to the Padres, but that was only for a player to be named later and cash. So I don't expect a lot from that unless if they really scout who they want in that player to be named later. Well, like you see some trades that turn out well for that, but that's really like a coin flip at best when you do player to be named later trades. It's like it's like the future considerations trades in hockey. It's like the biggest point flip, like is this guy gonna be good or not that I get is the future consideration basically. But um But the, uh, let's see here, the Mets, though, the biggest move to add to their rotation, minus the uh, minus the lineup moves they made, was a whopping three-year contract. <laughs> $130 million, uh for three years for Max Scherzer. And then on top of that, they bring in Mark Connor, who was kind of one of the sleeper outfield first baseman guys just because of his fielding glove. Um, and then you have Eduardo 
Escobar, who's not going to hit as well as he did last year. He had an absolutely ridiculous year. But if he still hits, like, say, 265 and does his thing, that's a pretty good move. And then you have Starling Marte, who people question how we're aged, but for now is a very good center fielder. So um, what do you yeah. think of all those moves for the New York Mets? It's a, I don't know, it's a, it's a tough way. I don't understand the, the question marks on Starling uh, Marte. All he's been able to do is, is go out and perform, and uh, he's the guy I really wish the Phillies would have went out and got. So I think that one's tough. I think um, it's speed. It's, His games, people think like I know Alex Carr said it. I've been in his Twitter spaces. He, I don't agree with it, but he. He believes just because his games were in around speed, but I could point to Torrey Hunter and say his game was oriented around speed and he still hit well enough to the end of his career to be a good player to have on your team. Here's my thing though. Like if you're so worried about his speed, like yeah, it might drop off a little bit, but the guy still stole forty seven bases last year. So okay, maybe he only steals thirty eight this year. That's still more than any Philly has stolen the and last like five 32, years. 30, 25. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like he's still stealing and, and also that's way higher than the league. Steals are a lot. I've said it in past podcasts. Steals are a lost art in today's game. So that's way more than the league yeah. average if you're getting like 30. Like nobody, like not many people steal. It's, it's something that, that's why I honestly, I know Phillies fans are going to hate this, but one of my favorite teams to watch this year was our former manager's team. Because you want to know what he did? He was aggressive on the damn base pass. Yeah. It's not well, common in baseball anymore. And let's take out steals. I mean, okay, so you're going to tell me you don't want a guy that's hitting 310. You don't want a guy with an on-base percentage of 383, an OPS gold, of 841. Gold. You don't want a guy, yeah, a gold glove winner. You don't want a guy that will fill that leadoff spot that this team hasn't had since – I don't know who knows when Jimmy Rollins. <laughs> the other thing is the Mets um, so, signed leadoff hitters. Like, like, like you got like now Connor's not the prototypical guy, but like Schwarber, he's let off for the A's a lot. Where you you let the Mets like I would much rather have Starling Marte, obviously, but you let the Mets sign a guy that would have been a nice cheap because two years twenty six point five in baseball terms that's not an expensive contract. Yeah. Uh, where if you have a very good fielder, a guy that can lead off, he's only a stopgap. But I would have at least been fine with getting a stopgap guy if you missed out on Starling Marte. The Mets literally got two guys that people were saying could be leadoff hitters in this market. And, like, they obviously you don't need two, two guys yeah, exactly. to lead off because they're not going to be leading off. So um, I, I think, obviously, Marte will be leading off for them. But kind of was a heck of a pickup for me, too, because he's always been that. He started at third, couldn't really field at third base with the A's. They moved him to first. He played the outfield. He really got going in the outfield, uh, he's one of those guys that kind of has that jump on my back energizer mentality because he kind of worked his behind off to stay in the MLB by saying, I'll do whatever the heck you want me to do, Coach. Yeah. And then he's got became a great fielder. Like, you don't see guys that stink at fielding in the infield always become that good in the in the outfield. So um, that's somebody I think is a nice small two-year pickup. Eduardo, like I said, he's not going to be last year's Eduardo. Like, he went ballistic last year where it would just be naive to think he's going to consistently stay at that when his career has not been that ridiculous but if he can hit like the normal like 260 and uh just kind of get it going because his career average is like 256 so if he can hit the 256 up but have the he's had like the 22 to 28 home runs that's still Mm -hmm. a very productive season for Eduardo Escobar I obviously don't envision him if he does then good for him, but he doesn't normally hit the 268 like he did last year and have his average that high. He's more usually 257 to 260, uh, but he's still a good player to have. Uh, but the biggest kahuna, obviously, the Mets were able to bring in was the addition to the rotation that I mentioned, the whopping three-year contract to a Mad Max yeah. Scherzer. Um, what do you think of that move as a whole? I mean, listen, he's a guy, obviously, I wish we would have went out and got. Obviously, another guy people are questioning with his age, but there's nothing but just go out and dominate. And listen, I think that move, without question, when healthy, makes him have the best rotation in baseball. Like, I don't know. Maybe you can name one off the top of your head that's better. But, I mean, if you're going to give me the Grom on, on game one, you're going to give me Scherzer on game two, you're going to be Carlos Carrasco on game three, Teron Walker on four, and then maybe David Peterson on five, but that's not counting whether they re-sign Marcus Stroman. Like, they re-sign Marcus Stroman if they're Stroman at three. Well, Stroman uh, went to the Cubs, so they can't re-sign Stroman. Remember, he went to the Cubs. 
I yeah. was upset. Yeah, yeah, I do vaguely remember that now, but um, but still, I mean, there's still options out there where they can sign. But yeah, I think they have the best rotation in baseball. Um, they definitely yeah. do with the top two, even with whoever's below. It's just the averaging out with those top two would probably give them statistically the best rotation yeah. if Scherzer and Degrom stay healthy. And then you have Walker, who's been bouncing it back the last few years, kind of rejuvenating his career. Uh, Peterson's more of just a typical fifth, but but you also have other guys there that are young guys in the system. So it'll be interesting to see what the Mets do, but they definitely have a very good rotation, I agree. So, oh, you also have Joey Lucchesi, who you brought in as a <clears throat> lefty from the Padres organization that you could – We'll probably be competing um, with Peterson there. And then Jordan Yamamoto, who you brought in from, of course, the Marlins organization. So they definitely filled out the bottom end depth options of people to compete mm-hmm. for the bottom. Uh, and then they brought in Santos, who they claimed, uh, who's more of a reliever, but Antonio Santos from the uh, Rockies. So the Mets did the little moves, but also did a bunch of great big moves. If I had to peg who, because of the offseason, the favorite if everyone stays healthy. That's the biggest question with the Mets. If everyone stays healthy, um, I would say they're the favorite to win the division based off of their offseason moves. Because the Braves also have to keep that young rotation healthy. Because I could I could also argue that the, the biggest key for the Braves, too, is if everybody in that rotation can stay healthy, including Mike Soroka coming back from a major Achilles injury. Uh, you have Morden's not getting any young, and he got a bad leg injury last year. Um, so uh, we'll have to see there. Yates was a good signing that we'll get to in a minute, but he's coming off an elbow injury. So what's Kirby Yates going to be able to give you? Um, I would say those two are definitely the top two. But if I'm saying who's going to be the most energized because of their off-season moves coming into next season, especially since I don't even think they're done because they have Steve Cohen as their owner, they're probably going to go after more people when the lockout's lifted. Well, that, that that would be the match. Because the Braves, yeah, you signed um, Darren O'Day to a minor league contract. He's been solid his entire career. And you brought in Kirby Yates, who's very good. But Kirby Yates is coming off of a major elbow injury. So, like, what 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 are your thoughts on uh, more so the Kirby Yates move, who has a career 3 5 4 ERA? I just looked it up. Uh, last season, he only pitched in – Six games had a 12.49, but before he got injured, he was an all star 41 save, 119. So, if you can just get something in between that, you got a very good pitcher. But so far, that's the main reliever move the Braves have uh, made, which I think is a good move if he comes back and pitches well. But obviously, do you want to put all your cards in the guy coming back from a major elbow injury that only pitched in six games last year? Well, that's a good point. Um, I, don't know, I I think it's 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 a tough call. I think at this point, I think yeah, you ride and die. I think you're gonna have to to go with it. It's what you've done in the off season um, with what you got else on your roster. Um, I think with the, the mixture there, I think I I think it's not kind of putting all your eggs in one basket just because you have so much talent on the outside. Too. Yeah, you have Smith. Yeah, you have other guys. It's more. Uh, he's the guy that you're going to really be relying on, I feel like, from the right side. Because from the right side, I'm looking now, you have Matzik's lefty, Minter's lefty. Luke Jackson's like your only other main right-handed pitcher right now who who did really well last year. I thought so. but, he's probably better than Yates at this point in his career. Yeah, like, yeah. When so you have two guys there, and then uh, debatable how well he's going to do. I um, mean, guys like Jacob Webb. So, like... It, that's why I feel like I like the move for Kirby H. I feel like I'm going to see them make another move probably for another reliever once the lockout lifts because Hopefully then you would have – Yeah, because then you would have Yates and then you would have another guy that's not coming off of an injury, whoever that is. So you kind of have more – you think that guy will be your other Jackson because you just don't have him coming off of injury, so it's more reliable. Where Yates is very reliable, it's just – he only pitched six games last year. The rest of his career has been reliable to now. I just don't want to overtax him early as a righty, too, coming off of an elbow injury. But the more guys you can add, the better for that situation also. True. Um, go ahead. 
I was going to say, I just think, I mean, I think Luke Jackson's a little underrated. He's not a name everybody recognizes. So I think I think he's the biggest thing people forget about, too, because, I mean, he's a guy, honestly, I forget about. But I, I think with Smith, Jackson, and Yates, if Yates comes back, I mean, that's going to be a pretty good t- team right there. You have Freed, Anderson, Morton. Hopefully they – I mean, well, hopefully, you know, health-wise and stuff. I'm not going to enjoy facing Sir so multiple, yeah, multiple, multiple, yeah, multiple times a year. But, I mean, no, this, this team, obviously – you assume, obviously, there's rumors about the Dodgers, but you assume they'll bring back their legend in Freddie Freeman, and this team will compete. I, I think this team's able to compete with the Mets. I mean, listen, the Mets went out and signed every free agent you could possibly sign that, that everybody in the world wanted, but the Braves are bringing back everybody, and they only got better with the eight signing. You assume they're going to, and this is obviously, again, the assumption that they bring back Freeman. If if they lose Freeman, everything I just said changes. Um, yeah. But I, I think. This team's right there. I mean, this team's going to be right there at the Mets. I would not be shocked to see them win, uh, win the division again. I mean, obviously, I'll have Acuna coming back. He'll get some of you guys back injury-wise. Did they? I remember seeing his name a little bit. I can't remember. They didn't re-sign Azuna, right? His name was just thrown out there that he was able to sign, right? Uh, well, I've heard people mention it as they have him coming back, so I'm not really entirely sure how that, how mm-hmm. that works. So, but I, we'll, we'll I see. thought he was. But yeah, so if they, if they get a Zuna back, you're getting a Zuna Kuna back. I mean, this team's only going to get better. So, we'll, we'll see what happens. It says he's still an outfielder for the Atlanta Braves when you look him up. Yeah, he's on their so, depth chart. I just. Uh, uh, so, I yeah, he would, he would be coming back, I think. Um, where. Uh, yeah, they definitely have a strong team. I think the Braves, it's going to be right now with the way the division shakes out, the Braves are match fighting it to, to the end, I think, at this point, um, as long as both of those teams stay healthy because that's, mm-hmm. that's the bigger bugaboo with the match. But also uh, you have some guys with the Braves uh, that you want to see stay healthy as well, like Ronald Acuna, for example. Uh, so uh, you need to be able to see that as well. But I, I think well, as we're wrapping this one up, like you talked about, I would say if I had to predict the division right now, um, I, I think it's slight just because of the veteran presences in the Mets rotation with the Grom and Scherzer. But I'll still give because you kind of convinced me with the returning thing, and I always like when teams kind of return. Look what it did for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now I hope the yeah. Braves don't win the World Series again, but look what it did for the, look what it look what it did for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, so they didn't bring them back this year, but they brought a lot of the team back last year because they were able to. The Braves might not be able to do it next year, but they were able to do it this year. So we'll see what that does. I'll give them a slight lean um, to first place. The Mets would be in second. Um, I think by default, the Phillies would kind of be in third at this point. As usual. Um, where then the Marlins, just because of – like I said, I feel like I like their pitching better. If Jazz shoots home, Devers' brother can get going at the plate. I feel like they'll be better than the Nationals. The Nationals are kind of where we were when we were fizzling away yeah. into the ether, where they just have these aging out people that you kind of just have to commit to the rebuild. You got to get what you can get for Corvin probably at this point this year. And, and just, chase, so do. Yeah. <laughs> but like. Yeah, yeah, like you have the star to build around, but you probably have to retool people out, like and retool that team because it's just not where you want it to be right now. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot different than us. You're right because we didn't have a Juan Soto that you could build around when uh, the team was going into the ether, where at least they have a top young stud in baseball basically to build the team around. But if you had to predict it, how would you predict the division one? I'm gonna go Marlins five, Nationals four, Phillies three. Mets two, Braves one. Okay, so you just switched the Marlins, and yeah. that's all we did. We switched the Marlins. I, I, I just think, again, Braves pretty much brought everybody back, like, assuming they would get Freeman. Um, you're going to only add talent in, in the starting rotation. You're only going to add talent there in the outfield. So this Brave team's – they basically – if you think about it, the guys they won the World Series without are basically equivalent to the guys the Mets brought in. That's the way I look at it. Also, they did. They won the World Series without Ronald Acuna, and um, that's my point. Like the guy, yeah, the guys, the guys they're getting back. Like Acuna is equivalent to the Mets signing. Um, I mean, whichever guy you want to pick, <laughs> but it, it's equivalent. I mean, 
Acuna is a better Marte. Acuna is more, so, more yeah, the yeah, hitter equivalent yeah. to Scherzer because, like, there's no, there's yeah. no. Well, I'm like, saying Marte's not equivalent to like Marte's great, but like all the different things Ronald Acuna can do as a five star talent to be like the home run, like a potential home run leader while being a stolen base leader. Yeah. Like Starling Marte is not that. Like, like it's no, it's no knock on Starling Marte. It's just an observation exactly. of how ridiculous Ronald Acuna is. Exactly. But I agree with you. I think this will be uh, another dog fight of a division this year, and I don't think the Mets are done particularly because of Steve Cohen being their owner. Uh, I also feel like the Braves will probably look at a couple other guys to add to the bullpen there. They um, did bring in Darren O'Day, though, like we said, in the minor league, so that could help you from the right side as well. Um, But um, I think that about wraps us up, Andrew. If you want to give where they could find you at and um, say anything else as your closing thoughts, you're welcome to. You can find me on Twitter at AJ underscore Santangelo. Yep. And you can find me at JJ Bora 26. Please continue to subscribe here to show you love and support. Everybody have a great and happy holidays. There's the Christmas tree in the background. Um, stay safe out there, everybody. Hopefully this lockout is over soon. There's still rumors swirling in the lockout, so it's fun to still do those at least. Um, but hopefully it's over soon so those rumors can become reality. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe and enjoy the holiday season.